Hi everyone, my name is Cheryl. Welcome to my Happy Handcraft Studio. I'd like to start by thanking all of my returning subscribers for coming back each time and leaving wonderful comments. Thank you. I'd also like to thank my new subscribers. Many of you are from the Stitch and Stash Retreat in Edmonton. So thank you so much for uh, deciding to follow my channel. I know I've added a list of people, especially on Instagram, that I'm now following. So it'll be great to see the projects that you're working on. I will try to do better on Instagram. I need to make an effort to show my projects and what I've been up to over there. If you ever if you ever have any questions about projects that I show, I do list everything down below in the description box. The designers, the fabrics, the threads that I'm using. So, great week again. It's always a good week around here. Um, I have a fully finished object to show you. I have lots of stitching. I have uh, quilting and bag making today. No book reviews, but they'll be coming because the books are really near completion right now. All right, so first of all, my fully finished object, and it was probably the thumbnail for this video, and that is Watermelon Tourmaline. This is a Carolyn Manning design, and I used uh, 14 count Ada, and I used the called for colors. With Carolyn Manning, I don't think you should mess with her colors. Um, just find the pattern that has the colors that you love. The way she works with color is wonderful. So if you're a longtime follower, you know that I asked whether I should make it a pillow or if I should frame it. And the vote was frame. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I did intend to frame it. I bought frames and I bought a square frame. And then I found out that it's almost a half inch difference in length and width. I tried stretching the fabric. It, yeah, it, it just didn't work for framing. So I decided, well, a pillow is a good alternative. And so I found, have Kona cotton. It's a quilting cotton in a, th a color I thought worked really well with it. And then to give it kind of the same body as the um, Ada, I did interface it and then I added just some stitching just to give it a little bit of texture. Now a bright pink pillow might not work for everyone, but it works great for me. And I have a chair right beside me that it will just look perfect on. So done. Love it. Uh, it might be interested in the back. I just did an envelope finish. And this, uh, the uh, insert is Ikea. It is the 20 inch down filled uh, insert. And typically when I'm making for a pillow, I like to do at least an inch. The actual pillowcase is about an inch to two inches smaller than the um, insert that makes it fill out really nicely. So, done. So what I've been working on. So this last week, I was focusing on hoity-toity. And I did get some good progress on it. So I kind of worked this part, I finished off this page, and now I'm working over here. Just to give you an indication. Oops. I would say I'm about almost a third completed. I'm to that point. I am using the called for colors and this is on a 32 count antique white Lugana. 
I really enjoy stitching on this. Uh, you, you tend to work with blocks of color. So it really, it, it might look confetti heavy, but there's a good balance in this one. So I hope to work on that again this month. So July started and I have a new challenge on semi sane stitchers and I am doing the one choose my whip. So I put up two of my projects and then other people on the Facebook group decide what I'm going to work on. And I put up um, Oology number three against a prairie school or Santa ornament. And the one that the people wanted me to work on was Oology, and this is the third shape, the third egg. I've already completed the first two. So this is on a 28 count cashel linen. I really love working on this because of the colors. I am finding more and more that the colors that I work with really enhance my mood. Like that's how I found out that I liked pink and red so much in stitching was by working with it. So um, for choose my whip, I have to put at least 500 stitches in. I think I have about 400 now. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll work on it this week and you know it, it could be a finish. That would be wonderful. So, I decided July was going to be Joyful July. I was going to bring out my seasonal Christmas winter pieces. And I've start, I've done worked on two so far. So, I use my tiny decision wheel. I put the six projects on and every day I spin and I see what I'm going to work on. So the uh, first spin was Christmas Ball. I'll show you what it's going to look like. And this is uh, a pattern on Etsy. It's X cross stitch pattern X. It's called Christmas Ball. This was one of my uh, New Year's Eve starts. And I think I've worked on it one time since New Year's. And this is what I've done so far. Oops. I hope to maybe, if I spin every day, I should be able to work on this three or four times this month. So that'll be great. And then the other one that I spun was... Uh, 2010 Prairie Schooler Santa and I was able to get a little bit of the coat in and part of the backpack. This is on an 18 count uh, uh, even weave and it's it called the colors called putty khaki using the called for DMC. So I'm working on that as well. I have four other projects. And the other one is another Prairie Schooler Santa. So now I'm working into plans. So I'll be working on 20, uh, yeah, 2009. Be working on this one. I'll also be working on Christmas Deer. And this is one where I needed to put the uh, T at the top so I could see which one it was. This is Christmas Deer. This is what it's going to look like. And again, this is X cross stitch pattern X on Etsy. And I'm using a 28 count Monaco with the called for 
thread colors. It'll be nice to get oh, a little bit more on that one. And I have this one. This is Merry Christmas by Doreen Jones. And as you can see, I'm just working on the border. I like, I'm hoping to get over here to the hat, so then I'll start working my way down. This, I mean the border, the border is confetti heavy for sure. But, um, you know, my plan is do a hat that's one or two colors, do some border. Do the beer, it's probably all one color, do the border. So go back and forth between confetti and solid stitching. This is on, um, it's on an even weave in a khaki, and I figure it's a 16 count. This was from um, a stash that a friend donated to me. And then the last one that I'm going to be working on is called Christmas Snow Globe. Again, this is an Etsy pattern. And this is how much I've got done. So I decided to do mine on blue. And this is on a linen, and it's called Perman of Copenhagen. And it's a 28 count. So I am going to be joyfully working on all of those stitches. Do any of you do seasonal stitching in July? Do you do your Christmas in July, Jolly July? Is that something that you're doing? I'd, I'd like to know. So because it's joyful July and I'm working on seasonal pieces, if you've been following me a long time, you know that I do a lot of charity sewing. And our Ujama Grandma Bags, Babies, and Beyond handcraft sale is coming up at the end of October, October 27th and 28th. And we do sell a lot of Christmas items at that time. So I have a whole bin of fabrics and projects to work on. So. Next time I'm on, you're going to see some finished Christmas items for our sale. Now, something else, now we're into bag making. Something else I made for the sale is project bags. And I was really inspired by creations by Cheryl at Stitch and Stash. She had just beautiful bags. And um, I know a lot of there are quite a few cross stitchers who do come to our our sale. So I decided I was going to make some vinyl uh, fronted project bags. When I make project bags, usually I have fabric bags. Um, I personally don't like fa uh, vinyl bags because of, um, they look messy, <laughs> mine do, but you know because I don't want to put the pattern on the front in case there's ink transfer onto the vinyl. But they are beautiful. Um, they, they're nice. They do look nice. And a lot of people do like the visual look of being able to see what's in their bag. I, I know there's a lot of people, they have different organizing styles. Um, I remember what's in the bag by the bag I chose for the project. So I decided I was going to make um, a vinyl project bag and I looked at Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. She has a tutorial for a vinyl bag and she has great instructions. And so I, I did follow her, and I did look at her instructions and basically that's what I followed, except for one thing. I was gifted this Joyful Stitching bag. So Joyful Stitching donated this bag to Sherry at Colorado Cross Stitcher for a summer camp. Um, I think it was last year or the year before. And this was one of the bags 
I want a package, and this was one of the bags in there. Now, what Joyful Stitching does is she has a wider piece of fabric here than what Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch does. She also interfaces it and puts the vinyl right up into this area. And so that makes this top part firmer. And I like that. I also like the proportion of being able to see more of the fabric. So, I, uh, you know, I always, I always do a practice one. Well, yeah, I always do practice one. It isn't that it isn't as good as the others. It's not quite as good as the others. I, I'm fine tuning. But I'm happy because this will now be my bag. So I had this great fabric. People who follow know I love deer because they're right out my window all the time. So, great fabric. And, you know, I did the heavier part. And it has a nice inside. Now, the reason this won't go to the sale is I had vinyl in my stash that had been folded. And... It, even when I, you can't iron vinyl, and even when I steam it and used all my tricks, I couldn't get the crease out of it. So I just put that vinyl away, and I went out and bought some other vinyl. And so this is beautiful. This is a 20 gauge vinyl, and it's it's lovely. Again, the same there. So I did a Christmas one, or a winter, and I did this one. I think this is really cute for people who like to do Halloween stitching. And then at the Fabric and Yarn sale from the Ujama Grandmas at, in May, I had picked up this fabric, which I thought was great for stitchers. And made this and this one I put a little tag on it says uh, you got this so this is the you got this bag and I have lots of this fabric so I'm going to be making some project bags that are all fabric as well and this one says start today so there's four you know I hope to you know, maybe make another four that aren't vinyl. Tell me, like, do you prefer vinyl or do you prefer all fabric bags? I'm curious, because if I'm gonna make them to sell at the charity sale. Now, I don't sell them otherwise. I only make these for charity. I don't have a bag making business. So, I also uh, made some of these little um, pencil cases to put on a book. So I don't have a bigger book here, but it has elastic. It fits onto a book. I use these and it, I use it either as like, like it could actually work as a bookmark. It's great for journals. And then this pouch is big enough either for glasses or for a pen and, um, a post-it note pad, that kind of thing. So I made two more. I already, I think I showed last time I had maybe four or five made, but I plan on giving them to my book club. So I need to keep making them. <laughs> and then one last thing that is both quilting and for um, my charity sale. I did a um, workshop with Susan Madu of Modern Blended Quilts and she taught us how to use rulers to make this uh, bright um, squares quilt. So this is all about precision piecing. There are quilters out there who they just they want their blocks to be exact and so they use different techniques they use different rulers they use glue basting glue so that they're perfect 
I'm not that perfect. Um, but it, it, if you need it to be perfect, this is the kind of a, um, kinds of things to use. So there's, um, we use two different rulers. I'll just get a backing here so that you can see it better. We used square squared ruler, which helps you to get this perfect square in a square. And then there was also this ruler called the, the Tucker Trimmer. I really should try to make use of those rulers. I tend to use the rulers during the workshop and then never use them again. So I decided to make like a baby quilt for it and not using real, well, I guess it's kind of traditional colors, but not really. Um, I kind of, I call this black and white with a pop of color. You know, I think it's great for families that try to, you know, use kind of different colors in their decorating. And then I found this really sweet fox print for the back. I thought that was, that was great. So this will go into the sale. And if it doesn't sell at the sale, I will donate it to charity. All right, I think that's everything for today. So, July is going to be joyful. I am going to take joy in all of my stitching and in all of my sewing and reading your comments always makes me joyful. So, spread a little joy. Send me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Love to know, you know, are you doing seasonal things in July? All right. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you again soon.